So let's start by sitting upright. The head is gently suspended from above. Body relaxed, at ease. Let your breath gradually sink deeper into the belly, releasing the chest, the solar plexus. Let everything gradually become more soft. Taking deep, long, comfortable breaths. Gently smile a bit with your lips and your eyes, perceiving yourself with kindness, allowing the body, the mind, gradually settle down by itself. Now, as you're breathing in, let your consciousness spread out into the whole body, feeling every part of it, saturating the body with consciousness. As you breathe out, releasing all the unnecessary tension that may be there in your muscles, Allow the joints to gradually, slowly open up. Feel the body settling down more and more, softening, melting with each out breath.
See if you can breathe in a way that feels good and feels nice. Breathing in, really enjoying the in-breath. And breathing out, appreciating, enjoying the out-breath. And of course, what a joyful breath is for you is going to be different from other people. So you need to find your own access to what feels good, what feels comfortable, what feels nice. And we maintain the simple rhythm, breathing in, feeling the body, breathing out, allowing the body to become empty, all the flesh to become soft. A tiny bit more comfortable with each out breath. And there will be a couple of very important points in your body that you want to release. One is around your eyes, your forehead. And your eyes become nice and soft as you breathe out. Allow the tension that may be in the forehead to melt, to evaporate. And notice that this is actually quite nice when this happens. Even a little bit less tension feels a little bit better. This is a trend you can follow, a direction. In a very classic spot for most of us are probably the shoulders. You can feel how they become soft as you breathe out, a bit more comfortable, a bit more relaxed.
And then there is your heart, your chest. Finding some softness, some space right there. Releasing as you breathe out. Feel as all the soft tissues gradually opening up. Just like a dry sponge that would be dipped into warm water and immediately becomes soft and opens up. Keep noticing how nice that is. How good to drop even just a little bit of the tension that you've been holding, sometimes for days, sometimes even for years. And then there is the tension around your rib cage, leading down into the belly. See if you can release some of that. And we'll keep returning back to these three major points, the forehead or the brain, releasing your eyes, the heart, the chest, and the belly.
See if you can find this little wave of release with each out-breath, starting from the head, the brain. And while you're breathing out, the release goes down into your shoulders, your heart, your chest, and the belly. And breathing in, feeling the entire body again. Breathing out, softening from the head all the way down into the seat. Keep noticing how nice it is to release even a little bit of tension. To feel it dissolve, feel it soften, feel it drop away. You can think of it like this each time you're tensing up. You're heading in the wrong direction. Each time you're softening, loosening, opening up, heading to the right direction. So which direction you're heading on is determined by this breath right now. And with each breath, you can make a new choice. Gradually moving into a different direction, a direction that is determined by your old habits. The habits of being tense, habit of complaining, and all these unpleasant, tight, tendencies that we have, releasing as you breathe out. After all, it's a skill to make your body a pleasant place to be. Most of us have never even thought of this in our lifetimes. Let alone think, that this is something that you could actually do. But here you are, releasing, softening, allowing everything to open up.
And you will become aware that the more comfortable and open you become in your body, the less the mind needs to think of the future or the past or other things. The less there is a need to be distracted because it's nice to be here, feels good. I don't have to think of other things. In fact, it'd be too much of an effort to. Why think of different stuff when I could just enjoy myself here, now? Notice what it's like to just simply be here without any need to go into the future or the past mentally. Just relaxing with this breath. You could even think of your entire body as being made out of breath, made out of energy. And each breath you can feel in the whole body. No matter what happens, no matter what comes up, or what you're experiencing in this moment, you just keep coming back to the same principles, releasing as you breathe out, softening as you breathe out. Letting go of your old tendencies to complain to yourself in your own head. To make yourself miserable. And to habitually hold the tension that you've been holding so often. Instead, release again and again.
If you like, you can simply continue doing that. Or alternatively, you can slowly come back and open your eyes and gently stretch your body a little bit. Whatever you're more comfortable with. Alright guys, good evening everyone, good to see all of you. I hope you feel a little bit more relaxed, a bit more open right now. It may not necessarily be the case, you may feel quite tense, maybe upset, maybe disturbed, could also be the case, right? What I would like to point to today is that you always have an option to change your direction anytime just with this breath right now you can change who you're becoming you can change who you are right now <clears throat> you can change what you do this option is available to everybody all the time difference is, of course, whether you know that or not. Most of the time, we don't know that we have that option. So you don't know that you have that option. You can change the way you think, feel, and act right now. Then something else will make the decision for you. And the thing that makes a decision for you is simply your past conditioning. It's what you have done over and over and over again in your past. That's that very thing that will then govern what you're doing now. Say if you're confronted with an unpleasant situation, you would do what you've always done, which may be just tensing up, becoming defensive, or maybe aggressive. And it's not that you actually choose to do that. It's much more that because you have been doing that so many times, your body is just doing it on your behalf automatic you know it just works uh, your nervous system your hormones your whole body the way you are who you are right now in fact is a product of what you did in your past all the little micro decisions the way you've directed your attention what you were paying attention to how you're paying attention to it all these things, they come with results, right? If you do something, there's a result to your action. Every single time without fail. And, for example, in, in Buddhist, I kind of don't want to say philosophy, but in, in the Buddhist instructions or teachings, it is clearly said that everything that you do counts as an action and every action is governed by intention and we basically constantly have some form of intention and the word for action that is popularly used in buddhist scriptures and so forth is karma you may not have known that maybe you thought of karma as some sort of mystical force that punishes or rewards people Kind of like in that same almost cartoonish way that people think of God as a punisher or a rewarder, like a parent figure that does things to you. But that's not actually the case. Karma simply means action. But it's something that you're doing. And action, as defined by the Buddha, is intention. 
As soon as you intend, you're already acting. And basically the mind is continuously governed by intention. You, const you can notice that. As you observe your at attention, it will move around. Not intention, but attention, yes? Where is your attention right now? You can observe that it jumps around. It goes to the aircon, to your knee maybe, to looking at something, then back to another sound you're hearing, then another feeling. So the attention for all of us is bouncing around among the six senses. You can think of your attention a bit like a monkey that's in a room with six windows. And what it does is just jumping from window to window, looking out. And each one of those windows stands for one of the senses. So you have the, the ears, right? Going to look out for sounds. Uh, you, know, you have the eyes, you have uh, the tongue taste, you have the nose for smell, you have the tactile sense of the body. And the sixth one is the intellect. That's what you're doing inside, mental content. And so the, the attention goes jumping around from window to window constantly. And what is it that moves the attention? Well, that's intention. And what's that intention governed by? It's governed by the search for pleasure, happiness, goodness, whatever it is that you desire. And at the same time, it is also governed by the fear of what you don't desire. Like fear of suffering and so forth. Yes. So this is, this is how the mind moves around. It is constantly searching for relief. And it's, that's how you could think of it. It's always busy looking for stuff. And it does that by thinking, planning, wondering, worrying, happying, sad, saddening, whatever it is that people do, right? So you can observe, what is it that I'm doing right now? It's kind of almost like a search, if you look at the mind. It's constantly searching, like browsing. Like the way you behave on your phone, what's that like? If you browse Instagram or Facebook, what's your behavior like? Isn't it like swiping, 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 just keep going, the next post, next day. What are you looking for? What are you trying to find? We can do that for hours, right? Just keep going for just trying to find something. What are you what are you trying to find? And what is it that governs this behavior? Well, that's intention. You're looking for something. You want something. And how does it feel when you find that right thing in that moment? There's a short moment of ah. And then you dwell there for a moment. And for that short moment, you have no desires. You found everything, it's, it's good, it feels okay, and but then very quickly, that lasts a split second, you, you want to see the next thing. So that is an action. And this action, the intention and the action are shaping who you become. So say if you continuously do this the whole day long, who are you becoming? It's a good question to ask ourselves, I think. One of the best questions. Like right now, I'm angry at someone, maybe. I'm angry at my wife or something like this. If I'm angry at my wife, in that moment, if I become aware, oh, I'm angry, I'm cooking, I'm burning inside, it's really unpleasant. Who am I becoming at this moment? And say, as a result of the anger, I'm blaming her for my own discomfort. Who am I becoming the moment I choose, quote unquote, to blame her for my own discomfort? What kind of person am I, am I becoming? Someone that makes other people responsible for my own emotions? Does that feel right? It doesn't feel right to me, actually. 
It's like I make you responsible for how I make myself feel. Doesn't make sense to me. If I had the awareness, the consciousness, to step back in that very moment and actually become introspective and look inside at what is it that I'm doing right now? In which ways am I directing my attention? All right, I'm directing my attention to observe the faults of my wife. Okay, how does that feel like? It feels pretty nasty. It's aggravating. It's annoying because coupled with the attention at, my, at the faults of my wife, there is also something else that I'm cultivating by the side, which is, I wish it wasn't like that. She should be different. And then I do something else after that. I need to make her different. And then the next decision, perhaps if I yell at her, she will finally be different. And when she's different, then I can finally relax. And I'm doing all that. But if I'm in a stupor, if I'm totally unconscious, I don't know that I'm doing this. I'm governed by what I've done over and over and over again in my past. And I'm actually strengthening it. I'm not getting rid of the problem. I'm multiplying it. I'm getting better at complaining, blaming, yelling. I'm training that right now. It's what I'm doing. So that's who I'm becoming. Does that make sense? If you're doing something over and over and over, aren't you on the road to mastery? Isn't that the very thing you're getting better at? Because you're doing it a lot. <laughs> Who was it? I think Bruce Lee said, like, I, I fear not the man who has practiced 10,000 techniques, but I fear the man who has practiced one technique 10,000 times. And so what are you practicing every day? You can easily find out. Check in. Right now with this breath, what am I doing? Who am I becoming? Am I complaining? Am I whining? Am I victimizing myself? All right, you're becoming a better victim. Is that what you want to become? I mean, it's your choice right now because now you're aware. Now you had a choice. If you were now to close your eyes and continue blaming the world for your own problems, it would be an unbearable thing. Now that's called What's the word? Um, conscience. You now suddenly have a conscience. You're like, oh, what am I doing to myself? And then you kind of can't continue doing it because you've seen too much. You can't unsee that you are the one that makes yourself miserable or happy. Knowing that is a change. It's a big change. It's almost like a change of lineage. You, you're moving from somebody that's just a slave of circumstance, finger pointing, blaming, not wanting to change myself, not wanting to actually take responsibility for who I become, to somebody that suddenly realizes, oh, wow, I actually have plenty of power. This is empowerment, real empowerment, to realize you make yourself. You shape yourself by every little second of how you direct your attention, your thoughts, your feelings, your emotions, your actions in this world. That's how you change. So rather than just sitting along, you know, like complaining, oh, I'm such a failure, why can't I do this? Like every time you ask yourself, have you ever asked yourself that before? Why can't I just do this? Like everyone else seems to be able to do it. Why can't I? I just want to be the guy who gets up early every morning and does, goes to the gym and does it. Why can't I? Oh my God. Who are you becoming when you're doing that? 
In that moment, if you were to wake up all of a sudden and you catch yourself going like, oh, oh poor me, oh, I'm such a failure, so miserable. Suddenly you wake up, oh, wow, what the hell am I doing? Who am I becoming just now? Okay, ha quick preview of the future. Look at your future. Me, like as an old man, going, oh, I haven't done anything good with my life with myself. Well, I don't like myself. I'm all right. I became an expert at this. Like I'm an old master of complaining. I'm an, a master of not liking myself. It comes like effortlessly. I don't like myself so much that, you know, I can't even sit still with myself. It's impossible. Five minutes is like torture. Oh, just being with myself. Oh God, so hot. When does the bell ring? <laughs> when can I stop this? What did I get myself into? <laughs> Why don't we like ourselves? I think it's because of that reason. Because secretly, deep down inside, your heart knows. It's you. But then there's all the layers and layers of the mind, just like a skilled lawyer that is able to just turn around justice and spin the words up in, in a way that like makes it all appear differently. In that way, the mind kind of just justifies all of this crap. So it just kind of keeps going with it. I don't have to take responsibility because that's kind of uncomfortable. I've been doing this for 20 years. Or more so, oh my gosh, like changing now? Nah. Way to heart. And again, changing now? Oh, way to heart. If you think that in this moment and you wake up again, oh, what am I doing right now? Oh, I'm confirming to myself that it's too hard to change. I just can't do it. Then, then your body and your nervous system, they go like, oh yeah, all right, that feels familiar. Correct. I can't do it. And it's his fault. And it's her fault. Yep. It is. That's how you're shaping yourself. But I doubt that would be the thing that you actually want. Have you ever sat down properly and asked yourselves, what you really want from life? Who do you want to become? Well, when you're doing your last breaths, how do you want to look back onto your life? What kind of person do you want to see there? Like, I'd be horrified if I wouldn't have changed. I'd be horrified if I still had the same mind that I had when I was 25, 26, 27. The same problems, the same complaints, the same old, same old thing, and just keep it all, pulling it into my 70s, let's say, or 80s. Jesus, it's like a broken record. And that would just terrify me, honestly. If I knew who I could have become and I wouldn't have done it, man, that's a regret. It's a big regret. Why didn't I do what was good for me? Why didn't I have my own back? And again, it's not done by asking myself these questions, you know, like, oh, why didn't I do what's good for me? Because if I keep doing that, I just get better at that, right? So a better question to ask is, what can I do right now to make sure that I have no regret by tonight? When I look upon this moment, in retrospect, I want to feel good about this. Say there's someone in your life that triggers you, that annoys you, makes you feel uncomfortable, and suddenly you wake up and you ask yourself, well, how would I want to have dealt with this if I look back onto this situation tonight? What would I respect? That's an option, right? You could do this. You all could do this. Asking yourself, like, you're, you're now tickled. You could go into a fight, or you could go into listening mode, perhaps. Like, say, my wife brings a problem to me, and in that moment I could 
because now I'm aware, I have a choice. I could go into resistance, then I could fight her back. I could push back against the problem, out of fear, maybe. Oh, I don't want my life to be uncomfortable. Okay, I'm pushing against this. Or, perhaps, I could listen and ask a couple of really good questions and actually take five minutes out of my precious daytime and make those five minutes count because that's the moment I spend with a loved one, isn't it? Isn't that what life is about? You spend time with your loved ones and it's quality time. How could I make this moment quality time? Well, first of all, by releasing my own tension and fear. That's something I could do. And because I practice meditation a lot, so it is not that difficult anymore because there's a bit of a habit there. Okay, so I release. And what can I do next? Because now I'm free of my own stress and suffering, I can be there for my wife. And I can actually listen to her. And actually help. What's that called? Well, love. Practical and simple, no romantic ideology, no nice pink thoughts in your mind that are totally abstract and impractical, but actual practical love. Listen to someone who suffers in front of you. Instead of having like high-minded thoughts about some philosophical idea of love, do it. There, right there. Instead of posting about it, do it. There's your chance to love yourself, which means to liberate yourself from that tension that you were holding. Ah, <sighs> much better. That was kind for myself, wasn't it? It was nice. I had just relieved myself of a burden. And I made the decision not to carry this around because it stinks. It's not good. So I extinguish the fire that burns in me so it doesn't spread over to other people. That's kind to myself. Feels much better now. And then to my wife. So now I'm able to listen. As I'm able to listen, I'm able to ask good questions because I'm interested. Why is it that you suffer? How come? What can I do? What can we do together? Make it better. And before I know it, it's just three, five minutes. Things are better. Instead of an hour of fighting. You know. It's not that difficult, actually. It's not that difficult. It's, it's a matter of just drilling it again and again and again. Waking up again. Oh, noticing. What am I doing? I am producing tension. And then you find some release. That's how simple it is. So you, you can cultivate this kind of little habit the whole day long to ask yourself, oh, what am I doing right now? Okay, I'm, I'm holding some tension in my shoulders for whatever reason. I don't need to. So I release that. That feels a bit better. What else am I doing? Well, I'm thinking about stuff that is completely irrelevant. And that makes my heart heavy. How about I let that go? I just stop thinking about it. How about instead of thinking, I prioritize living. So I bring the mind into the body and I feel the aliveness that is in the body and I allow that to inform me as to what needs to be done, what doesn't need to be done. Rather than the abstract realm of thought, I allow life directly to tell me who I am, what I need to do. I pay attention to it. As I come back into life, many problems are just solved right there majority of it. Also, then you learn from this. The more present you become, the more released you are, the better life gets. 
And the better your life gets, the better your relationships become. Relationship with yourself, no relationship with those you love around you, even the relationship with your enemies. It tends to hold the perception of an enemy in your own mind. It's unpleasant to hold that perception. If you release it, it's much better, nicer. And it will open doors to an understanding that, wow, just like myself, the person that I am holding unconsciously onto tension and cultivating tension, so is everyone else it's doing the same thing. We're all doing the same crap the whole day long. We're holding our attention as if it was precious. And it isn't. That's the big insight. It isn't precious. It's what messes the world up. That's what it is. What is it that makes the world a difficult place? Tension. People being tense. People not willing to let go and relax. People being serious, uptight, unhappy about things, as if it was important. Like, what are your pronouns? These things very quickly will stop mattering when you're at the very base of your life. To everyone who thinks their pronouns are really important, try to survive by yourself in the jungle. See if it still matters. Nature will sort it out and it will quickly show you what's important and what's not. It will quickly show you what is a construct of the mind and what's reality <laughs> without fail. And everyone who disregards the rules of nature, they die. As simple as that. There is no place for fancy thoughts. There's no place for fancy emotions that I'm holding on to as if they were precious and important. There's no place for that. Can't. That would be a good lesson. I think a lot of people these days, at least you know where I'm from, are very, very, very pampered. We don't even know what hardship is, real hardship. Also, because we don't know what real hardship is, we develop these fancy abstract ideas and we can argue around them the whole day long. Like, who cares what skin color, what race, what thoughts, what you are identified with? What does it matter? If these things matter a lot, it is only because you're totally lost touch with nature. Living in a technocratic world, everything's only about internet and information and people's heads are gone a lot and it's not getting better. So it's really important to make, take a counter measurement against the, this madness of the mind and actually come back into what really matters. Right now, your life in your body here, the truth, the reality of what you actually experience. And there is only two things that matter. You're either tense and unpleasant or open and pleasant. That's the only thing that matters. And then, as you're open and pleasant, guess what you're sharing with your fellow brothers and sisters, your fellow human beings? Well, you're sharing release. You're sharing comfort. You're sharing happiness. You're sharing relaxation. You're not sharing judgment, anger, bitterness, outrage. Would it make the world a better place? Well, you bet people were just a bit more relaxed. <laughs> how, how can we get a bit more relaxed? Well, do it all the time. Relax now. Drop. All the stuff you're holding in your mind and in your body, drop it. 
and come into life. It's waiting for you. All right. That's all that comes to mind for tonight. Are there any questions?